This is the Pinarello Belide TT bike belonging to current world time trial champion Rowan Dennis. Rowan himself, well, he's got a list of results as long as my arm. He's won, like I've already said, the world time trial championships, but he's won it twice. He's been an hour record holder. He's won a stage at each and every Grand Tour, and he's probably held the leader's jersey at each one too. I know definitely the Giro and the Tour, and I reckon the Vuelta. He's also won gold medals on the track too, and he's a resident here in Adelaide. So I thought whilst I'm here at the Santos Tour Down Under, let's go and check out his bike. And he's been very kind and loaned it to me for the day. Let's start then with the frame and forks. As I've already said, it's the Belide TT, which is an evolution of the previous model, just the Belide. And in doing so, they've actually reduced the weight by 350 grams, which is an awful lot on a time trial bike because they're not always the lightest bikes out there. How they've done it though, is through widespread use of Toreica 1100 fiber. So that's the carbon type that's been used. And they've laid it up in such a way that stiffness has been increased in certain areas and weight has been decreased in other areas of the frame where it doesn't need to be quite so stiff. The frame itself actually has two sets of bottle mounts here. So we've got one there in the standard position, right down by the bottom bracket. And then there's another one a little bit further up, but it's not really gonna be used for a bottle cage because if you look here, they're actually a bit closer than standard. So it's gonna be used for maybe attaching something else. Quite what, I don't know. Maybe you could use it in a triathlon, but there is a triathlon version of this bike out there too. Uh, now this frame does feature some interesting bits on it, which I'll get into very shortly. Let's have a look at them. start then with the handlebars. They're from Pinarello's own brand, which is Most or Most, depending on which way you like to pronounce your words. Uh, they are a pretty standard setup, really. There's nothing untoward about the shape or curvature of the handlebars. They're just a flat cow horn or bull horn type bar. Uh, when we look at the actual TT extensions, though, where they come up from this base bar, there is a fair amount of spacers there. I suppose it's probably around about five and a half centimeters with the upper spacer actually takes an angle and that enables the actual extensions to be up at an angle. Remember years ago, riders used to get super low at the front end thinking, well, that's the most aerodynamic position. Possibly it is, but they weren't able to unleash quite as much power. So there's a position now which a lot of riders tend to take and they call it the praying mantis position. Rowan, he's kind of in that, I guess you could say. If we look at the extensions, well, we've got a pair of Shimano R671 shifters on the end of them. And they have two buttons on each so he can control his rear mech with the right hand one or his front mech with the left hand or swap it around. You can configure these buttons every which way you like it. In between the extensions here, we've got a bar which has been kind of taped into position. And then we've got a GPS mount on there too, which has been nicely trimmed down. It looks like they would have used that on a standard road handle bar, but it's been put on there. You can see where the mechanics just kind of cut through that with a Dremel or something similar. Uh, so obviously Rowan can keep a, an eye on his data as he's riding along. The pads on the, well, the elbow pads, they're not too cushioned out. Some of the riders I looked at bikes of last year, they were really big. This is this is kind of standard. Now there is a little white dot on one of them and that must be for some kind of measurements with the mechanics of the team. I'm not that sure. There is also a couple of dots around on this bike. So I think he's had a bike fit recently because it looks like something from the retool design, the retool bike scanning, just these little dots that are on there, I don't know. The uh, TT extensions, they can be lengthened or shortened to your heart's content within the UCI's regulations, of course. And they're not uh, fixed in position with any Allen bolts, which is standard on lots of equipment. Instead, it's a uh, kind of a knurled nut. It's a couple of flats on either side, probably, I reckon about a 28 millimeter. God, I'm getting really geeky with this bike. Uh, on the ends of the handlebars, base bar, we've got the Shimano Jura Ace levers down there, which of course have the DI2 integration on there. We've also got some grip tape on the handlebars, both extensions and base bar for Rowan. No handlebar tape on there. He's obviously quite a minimalistic guy when it comes to this. And the DI2 cables, they just poke out and run internally inside of that bar. 
Nice. It's getting ever so windy. Wired up then to those DI2 shifters is a pair of Shimano Jorace DI2 derailleurs, both front and rear. Let's talk about gearing them. We've got a whopping 56 tooth chainring on there. Not the biggest in the Peloton, but certainly not the smallest. And the inner ring on that is a 44. That's paired up with a Shimano Jorace cassette on the rear of 11 to 30. It's becoming increasingly common actually to see 30 tooth sprockets on there, particularly with sprinters and also time trial riders too, because it enables them to stay in the big ring for just a little bit longer. Uh, a lot of riders believe to do that just because it's slightly more efficient and it stops them from momentarily dropping from one chain ring to the other. Now the bike's power meter is from Shimano and it's a dual sided one. And interestingly as well, is that Pinarello have decided to use the Italian bottom bracket standard on this bike. One of the few brands who actually still do that on their bikes. Yep, uh, there's also on the left hand pedal, this is where things get a little bit interesting really. I'm gonna to have to ask Rowan exactly why this is. But anyway, there's a pedal extender. So the axle on it is slightly longer than on the right hand side, probably by about a centimetre, believe it or not. Now those pedals are Shimano Dura Ace SPDSL and the 9100 model. I'm gonna try and find out what cleats he's got too. Just the more you find out about people, it's really interesting. Wheels wise, we've got a pair of Shimano wheels. Well, arguably, because Pro, which is the rear wheel is part of Shimano's own brand. But the front one then, Shimano Dura Ace C60, fitted onto it is a Continental Competition Pro Limited ALX tubular tyre. So that's got a latex inner tube inside of there and it's 25 millimetres in width. The one on the rear on that Pro Techstream disc wheel, that's the Continental Podium TT Limited. Again, that's got a latex inner tube inside of it and a slightly different file pattern tread on there. I remember racing on those many years ago on the, on the track, although mine were 19 millimeters and they didn't have a latex inner tube. The pros, they get all the good stuff. That rear wheel is held in place in those dropouts horizontally, so they're backwards facing in fact, so similar to that you'd find on a track bike. And the way that the mechanics can easily line up that wheel is thanks to some knurled adjusters inside of the dropouts, uh, which enable you to kind of twist them and then the little rod inside will match up against the axle, meaning you essentially can't pull the wheel over once you've got them lined up and set up. Uh, now something really interesting about that too is that those dropouts are actually aluminium so they're not carbon you tend to see a lot of full carbon dropouts but but probably because on a TT bike a lot of riders like to really torque up the quick release skewers so they don't lose any power whatsoever so by having an aluminium dropout instead of a standard carbon one you're going to do it less damage I guess if you really do torque it up whilst we talk about the dropouts well the front ones here they do have these wings or these tabs which enable the airflow just to go over it a little bit smoother so just cleaning out that dirty air. The brake calipers, they aren't Shimano Dura Ace. In fact, they are unique to this bike. They're Pinarello's own design, so they're fully integrated with the frame. And there is also an aerodynamic fairing here. So they're just beneath that. You just have to take that off with a little grub screw in there. Then you can start to work on them. Brake pads in there are Shimano's too. And they're the carbon specific model to aid braking on carbon rims. Nice. Set up really smooth. Finishing touches on a TT bike, pretty sparse to be perfectly honest, there's not that much you can do with it and if anything riders want to keep the bikes as clean as possible. But we've got a Physique Aris saddle up there on top of the, the Pinarello's own brand seat post. No carbon rails on there, just the standard alloy ones. We've got an Elite bottle cage, I'm not sure on the exact model of it. It could be a Vico of some sort but it takes a different shape. But I reckon it could well be a new kit chrono because it's certainly not the same diameter as a standard bottle cage on that because Elite do make a certain bottle designed for TTs. In fact, there's two out there. There's one with dimples and then there's another one which is just a, a shrunken down version of a normal bottle. There's also quite a bit of electrical tape going on on this bike to try and smooth out any holes because on the base bar here, you can actually move the TT extension, so the stack across 
about three or four centimetres. So those holes, they've been covered up. Uh, likewise, have the bolt holes where the fairings go on the brakes, both front and rear. There's also one here on the top cap of the headset too. And there's a couple more bits and pieces too that have been covered up here and there. I love attention to detail. I might actually speak to Ryan, one of the mechanics, and tell him there's a, there's a load of holes underneath the elbow pads there too. Uh, now, we've already mentioned about the World Champ stripes as well in the intro, but on the top tube, there is some more information too, including the date that he won his most recent world title, the time it took him to do it, and also the GPS coordinates on there too. So if ever he wants to go and relive it, he could easily type those into his GPS and well, find the same place. Uh, that though, really is about it for all of the finishing details on this bike. Let's talk weights and measurements then. Well, Rowan, he stands at 1 meter 82, which is just a fraction under six feet tall. So his saddle height, from the top of the saddle to the center of the bottom bracket is 78 centimeters. Then the tip of the saddle here to the center of the elbow pads is 57 centimeters. And the drop, now this one I'm gonna have to explain how I came to it from the top of the saddle down to the center of the elbow pads, that's just 10 centimeters, showing that nobody slams it anymore. Well, a few still do. Now, the weight of the bike, that comes in at eight kilos on the dot. Sadly, the mechanic who I loaned them to, a couple of days ago, my scales, that is, I haven't been able to track him down, but I did borrow someone else's. And finally, the free hub sound check, the moment you've all been waiting for, although it is gonna sound slightly different, to what it would when it's rumbling down the road, but hey, let's have a listen. Nice. Oh, it's windy. There we are, the bike of Rowan Dennis. Let me know what you think of it in the comment section down below. I have been told that he's gonna be expecting a new pair of triathlon extension bars going onto that bike pretty soon, so keep your eyes peeled for that one. As ever, as well, remember to like and share this video with your friends, and don't forget to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. And also, why not head on over to the App Store and download the GCN app so you can get involved with loads of great content on that too. And now for two more great videos, how about clicking on the links on screen right now?